Okay, so um, for this session, there is no there is no challenge for you to maybe submit, but you have that that you need to do because it's um, a guide on how you can um, work on your CV. I know we've done that in the first week, but you know you've learned some things over time, the skills you've acquired over time. So how you put them in the CV, how you highlight it for the hiring manager or the recruiting agency. So we'll look at all of those things today. So it's um so the place I'm is a little bit breezy. Is it affecting is it noisy over there or the noise is okay? You can hear me clearly. Okay, 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 great. So let's continue then. So the job application process, as we know, and um is kind of is tedious because out of every let me say 50 applications you get you can get um less than 10 interviews and maybe three offers or thereabouts but if you're on the um website or even if you're lucky so it's a tedious process so when you want to get started you have to know like and perhaps most people here they don't have the pro uh, project management background so you have learned a lot of things that you have to put into practice but there are some key things that we have to highlight in the job application process. And previously, we've talked about our LinkedIn profile because that's what is the um, like our online profile that we that tells the IR manager about um, our skills, what we are capable of doing, and all the likes. Then we also have our CV, which is essentially what you submit during the job application process, and we have the cover letter as well. So today we'll be looking, we've already talked about the LinkedIn, how we can optimize our LinkedIn profile. And a lot of people have submitted, or you get your feedback by today or tomorrow. Then the CV, we'll look at that one again today. We know we've done something about um, on that in the first week. Then we'll also look at cover letter, writing cover letter. Then the job application process itself. Now, the first thing is um, the CV. And just as we've known, the CV is just is the marketing piece, is the first thing the IR manager will see. So it has to, we have to um it has to highlight your values, your key skills, that you, how you can contribute to the company or the organization that you're applying to. And we have these different sections in the CV. We have our education, um, the pro professional experience, the project, the skills and accomplishments. Now, if you have to look at the first CV that you submitted, it has the educational uh, sector, like it has all of those things, but it is not really programmed for project management to go. So that's what you want. This second um, CV that you work on, you have to like tailor it to the project management to if that's what you are interested in moving forward. So how will you do that? We have your education, um, educational background is there already. Then your professional experience, your professional experience. So now we we'll have to talk about your skills. So um, the projects you've worked on over the twelve over twelve weeks. So the projects you've worked on, and then the skills we have your technical skills and your soft skills as well, and some of your accomplishments. So you put all of those things in your CV, and those are the things that will be very much different from the first CV that you submitted. So the purpose of the CV is for us to get like interview because it's like the first thing the IR managers will see. So, and you have to, the goal is to ensure that like, it satisfies both the human and the machines. Now, we'll talk about, so how can you demonstrate your values for employee employers? You have to have in mind, like, how can you be like valuable to them? And what are some of your experiences, your accomplishments that you've, um, maybe that you've earned over time and you can put all of those things there. You can put all of those things there. So I'll just go over the CV components again. We have the contact information. So your contact information at this point, I don't think it's going to change from the one you submitted in your um, first application. You already have like a draft of the CV. So your contact information, which includes your name, your contact um, information, your email, your phone number, then 
your link uh, linkedin profiles link to your linkedin account if you have a medium profile too you can also put it and put it in hyperlink so that should, the links will not be like too long then another thing is the professional summary and just as we stated when we're writing uh, uh the linkedin um bio is just like your your elevator speech so your professional summary should be about 50 words should be brief highlighting what highlighting your relevant skills what you want to like bring to the table and the likes so another one that you have them that i think is going to like change now is the technical skills that you've acquired so like um over the 12 weeks you've worked on like different projects so what are the skills that you've acquired in those projects you can just like write them out then from there you start grouping them you have your budgeting i know you did projects on budgeting so you've acquired the skills on budgeting which is very important for project management then we have your um, how to make schedule your data processing and analysis then risk management agile all of those skills that you've acquired over time so you just put them together in the technical skills then we have the soft skills as well which is uh, include your leadership skills your negotiation and even team what um teamwork team management to uh, strategic thinking and if you look at it you've actually acquired some of those skills during the training as well because doing um some of the the challenge is when you worked with um, the, your group that was like um, team management, then even working in different teams together. If the projects that you've been working on, like you've learned how to manage your time. So also critical thinking and problem solving skills. So all of those skills, you can highlight them and put them in your resume or in your CV. Yeah, go on, Susan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, what is this oriented? What is it? Detail oriented. Huh? Detail oriented. Okay, detail oriented. Yeah, like you pay attention to every little detail. Like you pay attention to the details. For example, when you were uh, doing the project uh, budgeting, for example, when you were working on your budgeting project, like you need to pay attention to even the um, the tiniest detail for you to get those things accurate even during your um surveying the market and all of those things so you have to like be detailed oriented for you to get all of those things done so it's part of like soft skills too that are important so all of those soft skills so you highlight it now before i move on to the next thing most times when you want to highlight your skills you know like you have numerous skills if, like over time you've acquired the number of skills but what you have to do here is when you're applying for a particular role, when you see a job um, advertisement, then you check out the description for that job. You check out the skills that is required for that particular job. So it is those skills that you highlight in your CV as well, such that when, they are, um, when the resume is being scanned using the machine, it will hide your skills that have been highlighted. It will fit into the role that you are, you are applying for. Say for example, if the maybe in the job advertisement they are not like they need someone that with good communication skills and maybe critical thinking skills. So those things, those skills, though you have maybe the negotiation skill as well, you can like the communication skills and critical thinking that the role highlighted, those are the ones you put on there first. Because you remember, we don't like make our CV or our resume too bombarded, it should be one to two pages. So you have to highlight the most important things there. And how you do that is by going through the job description, reading um, about like the essential skills that they require. So those are the ones that you highlight there. And those are the ones that you still talk about more. So you find a way to put in like those keywords that are on the job description. You find a way to put them in when you are describing your job experience as well. So now the next thing is our work experience. So we have the relevant work experience and how you can get that is maybe from internship and volunteer position. And now we know this project management um, training we just had is, so it could be like our first project management training. We do not really have maybe much background in it. And so moving forward, you may see positions that we maybe it's, you need to maybe volunteer. So just for you to get the, um, 
hands-on experience on those things to boost your CV. So even the internship position, just all those entry-level positions, so you you can apply to those, even if the pay is like small for the meantime, maybe just a month or two months, just to get those work experience together. Then also recruiters, another thing they look at is your achievements. When you're highlighting your work experience, and this one will also be important because right now, what if you want to like have on your CV, if you, the place I'm looking at that you have much of um, things, I'll talk about project management, will be in the project section of your CV. So you can also use the same thing here. So for the, when you are describing, say for example, a project that you work on, so you have to mention like you can use the XYZ, like what you did, how you did it and your results. So you highlight what you did and how you did it, maybe the tools you used, and then the results that you got from it, the impact it made, use like the projects that you did in the 10 Academy. So you can highlight, use that method to highlight them in your project section as well. And it's also useful in describing your work experience. But right now, I don't think you have much work experience that is in the project management tool. But don't look at it as it's all limiting. It is not. So, for example, some people may have experience maybe in sales and like. So you can also highlight those things too, because it, when you want to like start applying for jobs, we have um, project management. Like it's just like an umbrella, in the sense that we have different sector. Say, for example, if I were to maybe um, go into project management tool, and um, you can maybe look at maybe the health sector, maybe you're interested in the health sector, say you have a background in the life sciences or maybe the health um, sciences and the likes, or it, it could be in the financial sector. So the skills that you've had in those other sectors, they are still important to show like you, you are still very much important to show like, oh, you have this um, um, domain knowledge in this particular field. Though maybe moving forward, you're now focusing more on your project management, and that's where your the projects you've worked on, that's where you highlight them, that's where to show like, okay, you can work on those projects, even in this particular sector. Do you understand what I'm saying, please? Okay. Okay. So now, the next one we have here is, yeah, thank you. So, yeah, I just want to like describe how, how you can highlight your work experience. Say, for example, we have someone that, like, this is just a screenshot from one resume. So a project manager on the CV, they wrote responsible for project management processes and procedures for contracted work. Yes, you did those things, but it does not really give us a sense of how you did it, the impact you had on the projects and the likes. Even the reviewed customer specialization, then specification and requirements for potential future project development. All of these things are good roles and responsibilities, but they lack like, they not they are not scalable. They did not tell us how you did what you did, and they did not tell us the impact that what you did had on the company. Compared to this other one, where we had introduced an exp expense tra tracking strategy to stay within yearly budget goals, which reduced business cost by $1.2 million. That's just an example. Yeah, they are telling us what the person did, which is introduced expense tracking strategy, how they did it, and then the impact it had on the um, on the project or on the business overall. So when you are when you are talking about your work experience or even your pro the projects you did, you should try to put those things in. You should have those things at the back of your mind, and you should showcase them. You should put them there, not just writing oh. I worked on uh, budgeting for so and so companies, blah, blah, blah. And we don't even know how you did it. We don't know the impact that that had on the company. So, for example, you cannot just say, I manage a team to deliver a project. What project did you deliver? What did you achieve? Compared to if you say, okay, you manage a team of 10 and 10 pra and practitioners in a fast paced, maybe metric environment to deliver so so and so amount or to have so so and so impact. Just put those things out there. What you did, how you did it, the impact you have, the, the project had or that you made. So you should highlight those things when you're talking about your work experience. And even um, in the on your LinkedIn profile, so when you're talking about your work experience, you should put those things there. The how, the, the what, and then the impact it had. 
So another component that I don't think we need really change which is the education. So the educational background, and okay, this one too would have changed. So together with your maybe your undergraduate or maybe your postgraduate degree, whichever one it is you want to um you have that you, you want to highlight, then you also have this training you've had with them academy. You should be under the your you should be under the education sector too. So the ten academy you should be under your education too. So together with your undergraduates, so you should also have the ten academy that you um that you've also attended, which is like a three months training. So you should be under the education too. So so here we have your major, your graduation year, the expected. I think you have all of these things covered already in your CV. So with the one that we just changed, you put the ten academy, ten academy called then the um maybe the location which is in the US, then the duration, which I think you started by March then to um July. So you put those things there. And if possible, if maybe your um undergraduate um education has something, maybe has maybe you did some coursework that is relevant to the project management um role you are applying for, you can also highlight those courses that you did. Just like what we talked about when we were doing the LinkedIn of uh, optimization. Too. So you can just highlight them if there are some core courses that you did there that you think are relevant that you want to highlight for the AI manager to see. So you can put them there too. So now the projects and uh, section. So in your previous CV, the project section may be lacking. So some people may not include the project section or maybe the projects that you have there is not in line with um, the project management where you want to apply for. So you can just remove those and then you put the projects that you've worked on during your training at STEM Academy. And when you are doing that, you should highlight the projects you did then the um what you, like the project you did just like a heading for it then you should tell them how you did it what you did the impact the project and then you should have like a link to the project you know all of the projects you did is um has all this is online so you should have a link to the project to showcase okay so this is what you did and the, the likes and here i also want to highlight like on your 10 on your LinkedIn, you can include all the projects that you did with STEM Academy. The, you can include all of the projects that you did, include the link, and you should put them like in a hyperlink. So include all of those things. But in your resume, when you are doing it, maybe you want to submit to um, for jobs and the likes, you cannot put all the projects that you've done at STEM Academy because it will be too much. But what you can do there is you look at the role you're applying for, then you look at what's the essential projects that if you put there, we really highlight your skills, maybe the things they, they need for that particular role. So that is the projects that you put for in your CV for that particular role you're applying for. But in your on your LinkedIn, put everything there, your all the projects you've worked on, put it all there on the LinkedIn. They are all relevant for project management. But when you want to apply to a particular role, you can like streamline it to the one that is essential to the role you are really applying for. So I should include like the short description, just like how we say you should use the XYZ to describe your work experience. Also use that same um, technique to describe your projects as well. So this one is just like an um, overview of, okay. So we have the license and the certification. So now we have the license and the certification. I'm coming. So here we, okay. So it should include maybe the full name. If you have maybe any certification that you think is um, important, you can include it here. But moving forward, now I want to say something. You see, the training you've had at Ten Academy is a very comprehensive one, and it is really hands-on training. But one thing I want to say is, most IR managers, it depends on how you highlight what you have, how you showcase yourself. So that's what we determine if most times if you get hired for a particular role is how you carry yourself. So now the things, the projects you've worked on so far, they are basically like a um, real life uh, model. So when you want to talk about it, maybe in an interview, you can talk about it like as if you worked on it real life. I'm not saying like you, you talk about
Um, can you hear me? Okay, I'm sorry, my internet went down. All right, so um, the license and certification. So moving forward, there's this project management um, professional certifications that you can also take. So you can check it up online. The PMP certification is a really good one for project managers. So. And if you have any other maybe certifications that you think are important or all that you think are relevant for the project management role you are applying for, you can also include them here in this section, but it's optional. So we've known like the CV is the first impression because the goal of the, our CV is to get um the is to get an interview for the position and hopefully get hired for the role. So the overall format it should be consistent, so you should check your um, you should you should check your grammatical errors, your punctuation, your styling. The so it should be well formatted, and it should be at maybe one to two pages, two pages at most, because you want to tailor it, highlighting the most the things that are really relevant for the role you are applying for. But then any other skill that you have, you can put them on your LinkedIn. That's what LinkedIn is for. So this is the final checklist of um, your CV. So you should have no photo and your name should be consistent across your LinkedIn, your um, your resume. If you have a GitHub profile, but I don't think it's relevant here, but if you do, so your name should be consistent. Then all links works and they should be clickable. So maybe where you're showing the project you've worked on, or perhaps you put them in a profile, in a portfolio. So you can also do that. And yes, I want to say something here. So um, you've worked, you've done, you've had training on Notion, but you can still go back to check um, because Notion has a template for like a website or even Google sites that has a template as well. So you can just maybe create a website. You can check how they do it, check um, maybe YouTube videos. You can have like a website just to create like a portfolio of your projects, the projects you've done. So you can put all those things there. So on your CV, you just have like a portfolio that is a link that will link the, the they can click to to show all the other projects that you worked on all your projects all together so you can go you can create that you can use maybe the notion template you can use the google site templates there are a lot of um templates that you can use to create your website without the need to code so you can just check them out i just think it's relevant to point it out here too also check your um, spelling error and when you ask, when you want to submit your CV for a role, it should be in PDF format. 
because when they are in other formats, say the Word document, if the person opens it in another edition, it can um, it can scatter the formatting that you you have all together. So it should be in PDF format, and when you are saving it, it should be in your full name. Then that's your CV. So your experience, your res experience, result, skills, and results are consistent and correlate. So all of these things are just things that you can just check out how your CV, how you should format your CV. Well. So these are some of the links. You can just check out the links later. So these are some of the links that I, for um, templates of CV. So you can use those links to create your CV. And the CV you had initially in the um, first week, you can also use it as the draft. So you can use them as a draft and even a template to for your CV moving forward. And you can also check out all these other templates. Anyone is fine. So now we've talked about CV, but before we move on to cover letter and writing cover letter, is there any question? Any question? I can move on. Okay, okay then, great. So now let's talk about the cover letter. So you have your LinkedIn or optimized already. Your LinkedIn profile is up to date. We have your CV and it's okay as well. So the next thing is your cover letter. So this cover letter is so important in the sense that it's aside from your CV, which showcase which shows the um, hiring manager like the skills you have. So the the your cover letter is just like telling them about your personality, other things that your CV did not say. Um, it should not just be a replicant of what you have in your resume. So, so how should your CV look and um, your how should your cover letter look like? So we have different sections in the cover letter. The and most times I'll advise that the cover letter should be a maximum of a page. We should be a maximum of a page, four paragraphs, one page. So the first paragraph, which is the introduction and the introduction section, then the second paragraph will be like the body, the third paragraph could be the body, and then the fourth could be like the um, conclusion. It could be three to four par uh, paragraphs, but please limit it to one page. So, and the opening line can be as simple as, um, I'm writing to apply for social and so position. Then in the introduction, you tell them the role you're applying for, maybe how you got to know about the role, if, how you got to know about it, if it's relevant. Um, maybe you saw the advertisement or you were referred by someone. So you mention it there. And then you can just briefly, it's just briefly how, describe how maybe you can contribute to the company like just briefly, so it will be your introduction. Then the second one, so um, the second one, which is your, the body um, the body of the cover letter. And I said it can be maybe one paragraph or it can be in two paragraphs. So that's where you describe your previous work experience, how you can bring that previous work experience you've had, how you can bring this to the role you're applying for now. So you can use, you can describe maybe one, if it's one experience you want to talk about, it's fine. If it's two experiences, it's fine. One or two is okay. So, but one thing you do there is, you not just say it the way it is in your CV. So here, what you want to achieve is tell them that, oh, you have the skill and you are, will, like you have the skill, you have the capacity to put those things into like the new role you're applying for. So you highlight your um, previous work experience. And when you're talking about it, you not just like tell them. So you should show them just like how we say we should, when we are talking about our work experience and our projects as well. So you should show them, you can, for example, looking at the one I have here on the screen. This, the first one say, I offer exception, uh, exceptional attention to detail, highly developed communication skills and the talents for managing complex projects with a demonstrated ability to prioritize and uh, multitask. Yeah, fine, that's it. You are just telling them what you can do. But now compare it to this service and um, the one on the on the on the right side, which says in my previous role as an analytics engineer at XYZ Corporation, 
So it's how them like I successfully led a team in developing a so even here you can still include the successful led a team of so so and so person, tell them the number of persons in your team. Then what you did by analyzing customer and behavior patterns and implementing targeted marketing campaigns, we're able to identify and retain high value customers, resulting in a significant increase in revenue. So yes, tell them the how you did it and then the impact it has. Then you now move further. I am confident that my experience in leveraging data to drive business outcome will be valuable in helping. So now you're now highlighting how your previous experience is relevant to the role you're applying for, is relevant to the company, how it can, um, maybe have an impact on the company, the impact you can have on the company. So, and you can do this maybe with the second paragraph, or you can even talk about a different experience in the third paragraph as well. That is for the cover letter. So then after that, we have the last paragraph, which is like your conclusion. So there is just like rounding everything up or so, so, so. So just like the conclusion, rounding everything up. So your, your cover letter should be in three paragraphs, um, should be in three to four paragraphs, one page at most. Please don't like to be up to two pages. One page is okay. So the first paragraph telling them the role you're applying for, you're interested in so so and so. Role. Then the second, the what the your work experience and the skills you've had and how you can put it in the company you're applying for now. And then the conclusion. So you should keep it under one page. So the cop the short cover letters, it should be efficient, it should be relevant, engaging, and all of those things. So this is just a summary of what we've talked about. But before we go on, and how you can like get to write your cover letter. So the first thing is before you draft the cover letter, unlike the CV that we already have your CV. But also advice when you are applying for a role, you should try to like um streamline it your CV to, to fit that role you are applying for. So same thing with your cover letter too. So the first thing is you research and prepare. So research thoroughly the company that you are applying for, the roles that you are the role you are applying for, the specific their specific needs. Of the role, so you should identify key qualifications. We we'll, we'll look at how we can do all of those things later. So you should identify key qualifications. Maybe doing the in the job descriptions, maybe the skills that they highlighted. So you put all of the you provide those ones to that you note them. Then your recent experience, so you prioritize those things. So your experience you've had, how does it fit with the skills they are asking for? Then you optimize the content sections and the likes. So for example, if you say, oh, I believe that I have Python skills and seven years data experience that are relevant for this position, you can just say I have relevant experience and seven years experience for this position. So this one is just like um, how you can improve them. But let's look at, before we look at this job opportunity and how we can search for job. So one thing I would like to talk about again is um, just round up with the cover letter. You see, with the training, we've looked at how you can use different artificial intelligence to um, tools, artificial intelligence tools to to do your work. You can also do the same thing with cover letter. So now, what you do is the first thing when you want to use, for example, if you want to use Chat GPT for your cover letter. So the job, the role, or the job description, you copy it, the job descriptions, then you paste it there, and you've known how to like. Um, You've known how to like um, ask questions with chat GPT. So you copy is there. So you've known how to prompt chat, chat GPT access to maybe write a cover letter for this particular role. Then once it has written those ones, then your CV that you've prepared, then you copy it as well. Then the work is your work experience section and even your project section. Then you ask it again to so like using this particular work experience and this particular project, you should edit the cover letter that it has before. So once it has written those things down. So now one thing I'll be have um, you need to bear in mind is this is just like the first step in writing your cover letter. So ChatGPT has helped you to like you now have a draft of your cover letter. So the next thing you do is you yourself, the human. So you sit down and then you edit your see your cover letter. 
you make it more human like more readable and you've done you've known how to do all of those things so with your cover letter now it will be much easier for you to do that and please lay, bear in mind that what you are doing what you want to achieve with the cover letter is tell the hiring manager or the company like that you are really fit for the role so you should try to like personalize it as much as possible don't just make it generic even for each role that you'll be applying for moving forward so now we've covered um your cv and your cover letter and your linkedin and all of those things are up to date so how are we going to like use them to search for jobs so so the searching for job opportunities that's where it comes in but what are some of the platforms that you know that you can use to search for job anybody some platforms that you can search for jobs LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yeah. Upwork, yes. Um, Upwork is more for like freelancing, if I'm correct. Remote, tax, okay. Indeed, yes. So all of those all of those platforms, they are really good one for searching for job. Now, but before we move on, we have our skill mapping. And what we what we what basically what skill mapping is is you look at your experience and then you look at your background just like i've said before for example if i was one that was going into project management the most of the roles i'll be applying for will be in the life sciences because my background is in the life sciences and i'm not saying you should limit yourself but you want to like personalize so you should have sectors that you are really interested in Maybe it's in the finance sector, maybe it's in the telecommunication sector. So you should like have those particular sectors that bring with your background because that will give you more edge, especially given like you don't have um, work experience in the project management role, like and like real life work experience. So you can just that one will give you an edge since you have like a domain knowledge in that particular sector and you can highlight it in your cv so that is what like skill mapping is about so you look at your skills and your background what are some of those um project management tools that you fit into and then when you are searching for jobs that are for like project management please don't limit the word to just project management because most times for example we have a project administrator we have um program coordinator all of those other rules especially since you are just like um starting out all of those other rules they are still the things like there are still rules that are that you can still maybe highlight later when you want to start applying for project management rules and all these other rules is you still have those skills because they include most of the things like project management stuff so say for example if you have maybe put a program coordinator you have to talk about maybe budgeting time management um writing reports and the likes all i'm saying is you should look for other terms when you are searching for job on those platforms that you've listed look for other terms that you can use to search for those jobs that um, really fit the skills that you have so you can use terms like project administrator um, pro program management uh, manager assistance like all those other things you can just check them up online so you use all those things to to search for jobs not just project manage and uh, project management and uh, jobs and then when you are looking for those jobs you can like filter them maybe by maybe you are looking for internship or maybe by entry level or junior roles and the likes and just as i've said before please when you are applying for jobs and you've seen maybe your cv and your resume and even your cover letter i've talked about projects that you worked on in 10 academy when you are talking about them don't just talk about it like it was true like it was maybe when you've got into the interview stage don't talk about it like it was like um like a training for you highlight is like it was a real world experience like how what you really did in the project so you should not showcase it don't put yourself out there like a student or like you are still like just coming off so you should just put yourself like a professional that you are because most times those are the things that really count and most times when you get those um jobs in the junior level jobs and with what you've been able to achieve at STEM academy i believe you'll be able to like walk up to speed you get those things done at the job you get those um what you need to get done you get it done 
that's what the skills you've acquired at Ten Academy, and even with your grades and tenacity that you've had over the 12 weeks. So when you get to the interview, or maybe when you're writing your cover letter, don't sound like a student, or maybe you're just coming off. You get what I'm saying? Like, make it stand out, basically. So, okay, so... <laughs> Now, if you put it that way, it, I'm not saying you should manipulate the facts. Well, we know like higher managers are biased. Nobody wants to hire someone that they will have to like train all over again. And we know like the projects you did, you, you know it out yourself. The projects you did at an academy, they are like real world um, experience, like real life, real life like, very much real life like. So you can still like talk about it like it actually did, like those things you did highlight your Okay, so this is what I'm saying. The skills you have, those are the things you should highlight, not the parts that you don't like. They are not saying maybe you're deficient. So highlight the things that you know, like you have to the hiring managers. So, so still, I'm not saying you should manipulate. So you get the drill because nobody wants to hire someone like they will want to like start training all over again or the likes. So now we've known like when you are looking for the job, you should know um, maybe you stick, stick to just project management and use different other terms that still describe the um, roles that you can still accomplish or things that you can still do. Now, the next thing is you target your application. Now, what I mean by targeting your application is just what we've been talking about since. When you see a job that you want to apply for, don't just apply to it like, generic don't use your cv maybe the cv you used for the previous job then you just use it immediately for the new role you're applying for when you see a job application most times you go to the description the response roles and responsibilities the skills that are required and even things they require of you then you see some of those keywords that are in those um rules so those are the things that you you will also split out in your cv say for example so that thing you split out. Say, for example, you have maybe in the job description they are looking for someone that is good with budgeting. They look for someone that can work well with team, has good communication, and has experience with risk management. Yes, you have those um, experiences, but uh, those are not the only experiences you have. But since that's who you are applying for, those are the few of the experiences that they will describe. So you want to like highlight those things, those keywords. You put them in your CV. So that when they are using maybe machine to like scan your CV, it will show like, okay, those keywords are there and your CV too is uh, skill true. Likewise, when you are talking about maybe your, um, maybe the experience on your cover letter as well. So is those skills, you use those keywords to, to describe your, um, your experience too. So you split them up there. So that is what um, targets your application. So don't just be generic and applying to things and then, now, when we have, when I ask about different platforms that you, we have for, that I can use to apply, we have the LinkedIn, which is very common. We have Indeed, which is also very common. So there are different platforms. You have even um, Twitter, like job opportunities and the likes. But one thing I want to say here is when you see a rule or um, an advertisement, on, especially on those platforms, please don't just use um, the, not apply directly on those platforms. Take for example, let me use, I I searched for one earlier. So I'll just share this other screen. Okay. Okay. So here now, say for example, you want to, you want to apply for, um, I just searched for project administrator here. So this is the project administrator role that you want to apply to. And here, it maybe it's filtered it with um, maybe internship and entry level, or if there is a junior, you can also show that. So now, that is the goal we want to apply for. And we've come here, we look at maybe LinkedIn, we tell you if you have the skills, but well, you can just keep that. Then you read the description of the job altogether. So that you're able to like target your application to that particular role. Especially here, you look at your primary functions and responsibility, you perform procurement function. So you can, those um, 
maybe requirements of project team and just all those other things that just stand out to you you're able to coordinate project event and meetings those are things that you can do even maybe those are things that you can do and those are things that you will highlight prepare accounts payable documents so those things you just note them down so you'll be able to highlight them in your cv and even in your um cover letter too so what i want to point out here is we have this place like the apply and sometimes LinkedIn have this apply direct that they do not uh, put somewhere. I don't know. But most times, please don't just apply on LinkedIn because sometimes the application, maybe if the person that posted is just take it down but, and then decide to upload it again, what you've submitted before will be all gone. Instead, what you can do is you can, you can go to the website of the job posting. So the techno sub here, if you click the techno sub here, so you have this. So now, if you now come to the web, the LinkedIn page here, you just want to go to their website. So we have the join our team and make difference. And if you click there, this is the website of the techno staff. So always apply on the website of the job or maybe the recruitment agency rather than applying directly on LinkedIn or directly on Indeed or all of those other things. Because sometimes maybe the role is um, they've already found someone or something like that. So once you come there, you can come to like their work with all section or sometimes you'll have the career section. You can always see it on like most of those other websites. So here now. So search current um, openings, and then you come to the search current openings. So basically, what I'm just saying here is when you want to apply for a job, if you see the posting on LinkedIn or you see it on Indeed or any other platform, or any other platform, please always apply directly on the website. Go to the website and apply. It's not take much of your time. And then the next thing, Give me a minute, please. So the next thing is after you uh, maybe applied to the company. I don't know why it's not showing. Okay. So after you submit your application, then you can as well just like contact the company and maybe you can look for someone even on your LinkedIn on LinkedIn. management the hr or someone in the company just talk to somebody person most times it just like it will allow you to stand out during the application maybe during the interview process or even during the application process or even so it will allow you to stand out maybe you have some questions and most times this job as they will not fulfill all of you may have maybe some lingering questions that you want to ask so you can contact the company directly and ask them the questions that you have so basically it should have um you have a good linkedin profile your cv should be uh, up to date then your cover letter you should always uh, streamline it to the role you're applying for and then when you're searching for job you should skill mapping you should target your application and please endeavor to apply on the company website or the recruitment agency website rather than just using the easy apply or whatever else is there then when you are done you can contact the company. Sometimes you contact the person, they may not respond. Don't take it as anything bad, it's still okay. Sometimes they may respond. It's also a way to like um, network with them. And even if you do not get, even if you do not like get hired for the role, if you've connected with the person, the person can refer you for another role. You can say anything can come out of it. So yes, so basically that's all we have for um, today. And that is it. Any question? So there's no um, there's no challenge this week since you'll be graduating on Friday. So, but please um, do the CV. And if if you worked on your CV and you want me to um, check it out, you can still send it to me. I'll check it out. But uh, I'll review the LinkedIn profile that you've optimized. So basically, most of the comment I'm making on this on the LinkedIn, you can also implement it in your CV if it's relevant to it. So. Now, what we've talked about earlier, yes, you, the slide is in the, let me send the link here to
So yeah, so that is it. Any question? So, uh -huh, and I've said, and as we've said, when you're applying for a job, we know that it is tedious. It's not just like, um, you're welcome, Kulaja. Don't just like expect to get high. You may be lucky to get hired maybe on your first application. Yeah, it's fine. But if you don't get hired even on your 50th application, please just keep on pushing and like continue to like strive, learn, and the like. So, all right. Thank you. And any question, you're welcome. Okay, so um, let me stop recording and then I'll answer your question. So my experience on finding a job. Okay, so let me think. Uh, my experience of finding a job. Actually, it has been like tedious on finding a particular job. But let me just say this. My I cannot say like I've been searching for job, like really searching for job because my goal was to like after my undergraduate degree, go for my master's and then my PhD soon because I was like interested in academics. So so basically when I finished my undergraduate in Nigeria here, you have the one year nyc you serve your country so after that so i just like um applied for a job at a secondary school and here like getting those jobs are really easier because the pay is not much so like getting a teaching job is not like very tedious it's easy to get but what i can if i'm um, to talk about my application process that has really been tedious it would be applying for graduate school so that is one like I know like has been tedious and it can be like uh, similar to someone that is also like searching for a job. So you get, since we are not like interested in like securing a job, I'm not really interested in like securing a job right now, now, now. So I'm more like interested in going for like my master's, which I am currently rounding up and then my PhD, which I'll start by August this year. So yeah, so that, but my, when I was applying for grad school, it was actually very tedious because um, I think I this year, last year actually, was my third application, SACU. I graduated 2020, started applying for PhD, direct PhD, 2020. So 2020, I applied 2021, 2022. So 2023, which is last year, was when I got admission. So during the process, they are like, um, when I applied, you know, 2022, I got interviewed for about um, two universities, but I did not get the admission. So basically, it's just you not giving up because at the end of the day, you 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 will apply like maybe the first time, you may not get the role. You can apply, you can have 100 applications and you not get the role. Or you can, out of the 100, maybe you have five um, interviews and at the end of the day, nobody will still give you the job. So, but one thing you have to have in mind is your tenacity, like what do you really want? So once you have that, okay, this is the role you're really interested in. This is what you really want to do. So you just continue to improve yourself, work on your skills, work on um, maybe projects to showcase those things. You can, okay, it's um, abroad actually, but I did my master's in Nigeria, but I'll be going for my PhD in, in US. So it's just like, you already know those things. You so you'll be improving your skills, just like your project management now. So you've um let me see, you don't have that hands on experience now. So but you can volunteer even without getting paid, just to have those um experience, those are those things, so I'll be able to showcase them. So basically just keep on applying, keep on upskilling, and you definitely get it. So yeah, but don't expect it to be easy all right so any question oh i thought i have stopped recording okay <laughs>